Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of The Months Report as we look back on another big week of results uh, and preview all the weekend's racing action. Anzac Day, number of runners heading across uh, various meetings over the weekend, so lots to get through. Trainer Chris Months joins us off the back of a weekend double, courtesy of Jabali Gold for the Hancock's Bloodstock team and Reliable Ruby for the Strong Bloodstock team. That made it back-to-back -back wins for Jabali and, and Reliable Ruby winning impressively on debut which made it four winners in, in seven days for the stable. So welcome, mate. You must be um, really happy with those performances and the way that, that the team's going in general. I think they're going really well, Adam. Yeah, I mean, these, these um, new new fresh faces like Reliable Ruby and Plyce Pan and even Jabali Gold to a lesser extent are sort of starting to show their wares and, um, and, um, and racing to the way that I'd sort of hoped that they would. So it's, um, yeah, it's good to see them hitting the line and, and racing with great consistency. Yeah, no, very good. And well done to Connections there. There was a big uh, ownership group on hand for Jabali Gold's second win and, and Reliable Ruby. Obviously, it doesn't get better than winning on debut. So well done there. And also to Maddie McGilvray, who's on fire at the moment. Uh, treble at the Gold Coast on Saturday and a, a double at the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, no, he's riding well, Matthew. There's no doubt about it. He's got the ability. I just wish he'd get out of bed a bit more often. <laughs> <laughs> get him down to track work, mate. But he's on the comeback trails and he obviously had that that injury and he's, um, he's uh, yeah, yeah, trying to get back into the groove, I guess. So, um, all right, well, let's get into the weekend preview. As I mentioned, there's a lot to get through. Um, we kick off uh, Gatton on Friday, which gets us underway with My Girl Rocks, who, of course, was the, um, the Unibet price push last week. Um, she didn't really finish off there, did she, at the Gold Coast, but um, she lines up here in a maiden plate over the 1,400. What did you make of that run? And, and, and obviously, if you're backing her up, I'm, I'm thinking you're – you're happy where she's at? Don't, couldn't find too much wrong with her, Adam. She pulled up quite well after the race and she was healthy and sound. And it was, as you said, uncharacteristic. The Gold Coast track of late's been very leaderish, though. Um, and I'd sort of hope that she jumped cleaner than what she did and, and be able to hold the, hold the lead and, and um, take control of the race by the scruff of the neck. But, um, you know, a couple of long priced horses went around her and crossed her and then she was back behind them and then got shuffled out, shuffled out onto the, to a, you know, a part of the track where no horse had sort of won on. So I think there was a few genuine excuses there for her. So hence the reason um, she pulled up well. There's no reason not to back her up. She'll wear blinkers tomorrow and um, I'm hoping that on top of the ground, 1400 will suit her nicely. Very good. Of course, uh, she's also another strong bloodstock runner, so looking to make it um, two winners in a few days there. Okay, we then move over to Doombin on Saturday where you've got the four acceptors. Um, let's welcome John Bird from Unibet. He's going to help us out with some prices on these Metro runners and let us know about a new offer uh, for months racing owners this week. Welcome, John. You're back again to give us all the juicy odds uh, this week. And and let's just, I guess, quickly touch on last week. Um, you gave us some juicy odds about My Girl Rocks and some of the months racing owners took that up. Uh, unfortunately, she just didn't run up to expectations for the owners there. No, she um, was well supported in the race and was in the right spot and everything, but just didn't want to finish off for us. No, so we move on. We've just touched on her uh, racing at Gatton on Friday, but let's get into the preview for... Doombin on Saturday and hopefully you can give us some uh, insights there on, on prices and then also what the market's doing. I guess we've got to preface this, this with uh, there are a few dual acceptors across the, the weekend. So race one, uh, Everlast lines up here in a cutest two-year-old handicap over the 1200 with just, Justin Huxtable to write. Uh, Chris, yep. um, he's a two-year-old Colt that we, we touched on last week. He, he, he um, trialled nicely, didn't he? And, and I take it you're happy with him heading into this first up assignment? Yeah, he's also accepted for the Sunshine Coast um, where he has drawn one barrier and it uh, probably makes it a little bit hard to turn away from that. But, you know, I think the reality is if we're going to um, think that he's going to be competitive over the Winter Carnival and a few of these better races, he's probably going to have to take his place in town on Saturday um, to see where he's actually at. But um, I think he's, a, I think he's a, uh, you know, he's a horse with a bit of ability, but um, he's still learning what it's all about. Okay, sure. And John, where's he placed in the in the market? What can you tell us there? Um, he's twenty three dollars the win and six fifty the place. 
the town on Saturday, the race on Saturday. Um, with just Brisbane horses coming in the race, it'd be well, a very good chance. We've got Sydney Foreman in the race, so it's hard to line up, but he's a horse with good potential. Okay, well, there you go. We move over to race three, uh, which is a benchmark 75 over the 1630. Wowzers lines up here for Jim Byrne from Barry Three. He's another dual acceptor, uh, also entered for the Sunshine Coast. Um, was a narrow second over the 1400 last start at the Sunshine Coast and steps up to the mile here, Chris. Yeah, well, I really wanted to see him hit the line like he did the other day. We tried him in a mile once before and he, he over raced and was sort of box seated and probably raced a little bit aggressive and didn't finish off. But I was really happy um, the other day when Justin rode him, he, he was able to drop the bit and relax and he was really strong through the line. So I think um, with a, you know, a lightweight on Saturday, a good draw, a good rider on, I'm hoping that Jimmy can just get him to switch off the first first part of the race. And um, if that's the case, I think that to, to race that um, he's certainly a, a good chance of racing very well in. Okay, John, what are your thoughts on, on him from a, a market perspective? On Saturday in town, he's $7 and $10.50. And there's no prices out yet for Sunday. But Sunday's Anzac Day. There's no way Wowsers can race on Sunday. It's a very social day, so it's our Saturday, I think. Very good. I like it. I like it. So we then move over to race four where Phoenix is engaged here. Uh, he's on the backup after a brave second at the coast, uh, the Gold Coast last week uh, for his third up assignment here over the 1,200 in a no metro wins handicap. Uh, Bobby elicited a ride from Barry 10, Chris. Yeah, well, I just thought um, we'll probably run in town because, I mean, it's probably the last opportunity that he's going to get uh, during the winter to be able to pick up with some Saturday prize money. Um, he's he's um, obviously drawn a little bit better at the Gold Coast, but I just think a no Metro win 1,200 in, in town on Saturday suits him. He's racing very well. He is racing well, this horse, and I do think that um, his run last Saturday was good behind a horse who, once again, was able to lead and dictate on the speed on the fence in front at the Gold Coast. So um, he, he'll, I'd say at this stage he'll go around in town on Saturday. Okay, John, and Phoenix, what's the market saying about him for Saturday at Doombin? We've got him $14 to win and four twenty the place. And he's a good, tough run last week. And if he gets a nice little run early, he's going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, on-speed runner there. So uh, yeah. watch out. Could be a bit of each-way value there. We then move over to the um, the final event, race nine. Um, the last runner being... Romany Girl, um, who got back on debut for the stable, Chris, in what was her first up run. And you'd think, I guess, she'd be better suited over the 1350, uh, more to her, I guess, her profile. But um, she's drawn wide here in Barry 15 for Larry Cassidy. Yeah, so she's going to need a few scratchings um, for her to take her place on Saturday. Um, we'll, if not, we'll just try, jump her out on Tuesday and head to the Silk Stocking in two weeks' time. But um, if for, for whatever reason she does run, I thought the 1350 suits are a bit better. The 1200, she never travelled um, on that heavy track the other day for Mark Duplessis. She never was never able to find her footing and, and get on the bit and travel. So I'm hoping up to the 1350, we'll see her travel a bit stronger and um, and run a much improved race. Very good, John. Well, what what does the market say about Romany Girl? Obviously, um, yeah, the, the form uh, from last start not, not all that enticing for punters, I guess. Yeah, so the $61 and $16 suggests that sort of she's still working her way into the right race later on in the preparation. Okay, well, that's the Doombin runners for Saturday. Uh, John, thanks for those betting insights. And before you go, we're going to try a little something different for months racing owners uh, this week. Uh, obviously, Anzac Day on Saturday. Tell us a little bit more about the offers uh, that Unibet have got for months racing owners this week. Now, Saturday, we're starting at the Quaddy Club up for Chris Munts Racing members. And everyone goes to their account, tells how much they want to bet. And that bet goes into an account that Adam will place the Quaddy numbers on for doing bit on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we've got another special called the Two Up. And everyone can vest on it outside the club as well. And it's on Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth racing. And that'll all be in their um, Unibet account. Details will be there for that. Now for Chris Runt's, Chris Munt's racing club members, our special on Sunday 
is a bow desert on a horse called Cythero. Cythero's price will be published late on Saturday, and then we'll put an uplift on Cythero for Chris Munt's Racing Club members for Sunday. Very good. Well, sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll get Chris's thoughts on Cythero in a minute when we get into the, uh, the Sunday runners, but sounds like a bit of fun with the Quaddy Club. So I guess just to reiterate, so the Munt's Racing team will collectively put their heads together with some numbers and selections for the, the Quaddy legs at Doombin on Saturday. Uh, and then months racing owners can elect to have a wager for whatever stake they wish. And obviously it's, it's just as you normally would, uh, you get a percentage, yeah. you're just basically betting on uh, the numbers that the months racing team uh, have come up with. So a bit of fun for everyone. So good on you, John. Thanks for your time again. And, uh, and thanks for the offers. Okay. Good luck boys. Okay. Then we move over to Gold Coast on Saturday where you've got the two runners uh, headed down the M1 First of those being Miss Piper, who lines up in race two, a cutest two-year-old maiden plate over the 1,000. She's a two-year-old filly who resumes here for her second career start uh, and trialled well last week. Yeah, she's a nice filly. She's still just a little bit hot, gets herself a bit hot and stirry. Um, but I think that the 1,000 metres, they should go quite quick for her to be able to get off the bit and relax and give her an opportunity to run on because she does have a very good turn of foot um, when she's able to relax the first part of her gallop. So... Yeah, no, it's, I'm looking forward to getting it to the races for the first time. Yeah, we'll be uh, excited to see her go around. Then race seven, uh, Dash for Dreams lines up in a Phillies and Mares Class 1 handicap. Uh, Noel Callow, an interesting booking here uh, to ride. He's obviously having a riding stint in Queensland. He's quite the character. Noel, isn't he, Chris? Sure is. No, he, King Callow, he's a... He's a He's a, good, he's a bit of a character, but he's a good rider, and um, I'm, I'm sure that he'll suit Dash for Dreams well. She's drawn nicely, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how she's going as well, so I'm, I'm sure he'll do, the, do a good job for us and give her a good ride. Yeah, she obviously resumes here um, off a, a lengthy sort of spell. You obviously felt she needed a, a decent break after her last prep. Yeah, she did. Oh, look, she's always been a bit of a, an immature sort of filly, but I'm really happy with her this time in. She's a lot stronger and doing a lot better in the stables, and her um, I've been happy with where her work's at it also. So uh, no, I'm looking forward to kicking her off on Saturday. Very good. We then move over to the Anzac Day meetings, uh, at both the Sunshine Coast and Bow Desert. Um, you've got the four runners, uh, four likely runners headed to the Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast, rather. Uh, race three, Moonshiner lines up in a maiden plate. He's first up here and won a recent trial. Yeah, he's going really well, this guy. Uh, sort of done a few things different with him. He's prep, kept him a bit shorter and sharper. I, I always thought that she, he might get out over a, a bit of a trip, but um, he seems to be appreciating the um, the shorter sort of training and, and, and fitness regime. And he's um, a horse that I, I wouldn't uh, rule out a race like this. He's going quite good. And um, Clowner, the, the track itself is a big spacious track, and I'm sure it's just going to give him every opportunity to find his feet and, and uh, finish his race off. Yeah, very good. He's, of course, Gone, gone close a couple of times, hasn't he? So uh, good luck to connections there. We then move over to race four, where the landing lines up in a maiden plate over the 1,200. Um, the landing's also first up here and ran fourth in a trial at Doombin last week. Yeah, well, I, this horse is going much better also. He's, um, this time around, his head's been a lot calmer. He's, he's coping with his work a lot better. And I thought his two trials this time around have been pretty good. He's a big striding horse. That's why I, I'm, I'm happy to take the Calandra to kick him off. As I said before on this program, I think it's a it's a beautiful track, Calandra, to kick him off and get him a bit of confidence and um, education. And I'm sure he'll appreciate the big, long straight. Very good. We then move over to race eight uh, and race nine, where two horses are resuming here. The first of those in, in race eight is Correa. Um, Barry 14 for Larry Cassidy. He's first up and ran fourth in a trial last week. Um, what did you make of that trial? Yeah, I thought his, his trial was quite well. I mean, this horse um, likes to get out to a mile or more. He's a, he's a um, sizzling and he does, to me, shape as if a horse that's going to run a, a strong mile, 2,000 metres. So he'll, he will take his place on, on Sunday. Uh, he has drawn awkwardly, but uh, we'll have to leave that up to Larry as to how he rides him and where he puts him in the race. Okay. And the final runner on the program is Thrasher, who's also first up. Uh, Barry won for Bobby Alyssa um, and finished off a trial nicely last week also. Couldn't be happier with this filly. It's um she's another one that's come back this preparation a lot more settled, a lot stronger, and um, looks really well. Probably just got to clean up a little bit in her coat, but that'll come 
um, when she has another run or two under her belt. But um, she's certainly on track to what I'm hoping to show us um, what she what she we see of a morning at track work. Okay, very good. Well, interesting to see how those horses go, sort of kicking off their preparations uh, as we get into it. Uh, and then moving over to the Bow Desert Anzac Day meeting. Uh, race two, Buddha lines up in a cutest two-year-old maiden plate over 1,200 metres. Alan Chowder ride. He's drawn a barrier here. He obviously had a, a tough um, tough barrier last start uh, where he was first up. He was nine of nine there. Um, but he's favoured better with the barrier gods here. He has. And, and um, look, I think the 1,200 Bow Desert is probably nice for him. He's going to be able to box seat or lead whatever Alan Chow wants to do He's and um, control the race. And it'll be up to him then um, where he how he rides him, but um, he's, a, he's a tough little fella. And I thought his run the other day at Clowner was very good first up. Very good. And the final runner for the weekend, last but that surely not least, Scythero, who's the chestnut with a big baldy face. You won't miss him in the run. Um, he was a close-up second at Doombin at midweek level last start mm -hmm. and gets up to the 1,400 metres here in a cutest three-year-old maiden plate. And as John said, um, that's the Unibet price push uh, uplift for this week. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he raced very well on top of the ground um, last start of Doom. And had his race is spaced a little bit. I just thought that run took a bit out of him, but he's picked up now. And uh, from the good draw, he's going to give himself every opportunity. He'll travel, rel uh, travel well, hopefully just find the speed and um, get out at the right time. Very good, mate. Well, we got through them all and uh, lots of runners. Uh, so good luck to yourself and Connections and, and everyone have a good Anzac day. Good on you, Adam. Thanks, mate. Thank <music> you.